Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to configure settings on a Fronius inverter to comply with the Victorian emergency backstop mechanism. So there's a few requirements on our side to make that work. Firstly, the inverter needs to be online, so it needs to have a valid internet connection. So a hardwired connection is always recommended, but if you have to use Wi-Fi, then a signal strength of negative 59 dBm or better is what you need. So if you're using an inverter that has a pilot monitoring card, such as a Gen24, Toro or Verto, this corresponds to two bars in that Wi-Fi symbol that you can see here in the network settings. Secondly, you need to have a smart meter or an energy meter installed on the site. So any of the smart meters that you can see listed here are compliant. Then lastly, the inverter needs to be on the required firmware. Now for your inverters with a pilot monitoring card, there's basically just one firmware, right? So your Gen 24s, Toros, Vertos, it needs to be on 1.33 or above. For your snap inverters, there's two types of firmware. There's the inverter firmware and the data manager firmware. And what we're referring to here is the data manager firmware. And that needs to be on 3.31.1-7 or above. I'm gonna show you how to do the settings on any of our inverters that have a pilot monitoring card. Now, some of these settings are in the inverters interface or the web UI. If you wanna know how to access the web UI, I've put in a link to a video in the description below. So the first step, make sure that the inverter is on the required firmware. I'll show you three ways to update the firmware. Whichever method you use, I always recommend downloading the firmware file directly from the Fronius website, so you have a copy on your smart device at all times. A link is provided in the description below for the web page with the latest firmware file. The first way is through the Inverter Web UI, and you need to have that firmware file downloaded from the Fronius website. You can download the file itself in SWU format or a zip folder which is a bit quicker. Do this before you get to site to save time. Once the file is on your device, go to the web UI, log in, then navigate to system, then update. Either click on browse file to find the file on your device or drag and drop the file into the box. On a laptop, the file will be in your downloads folder. On iPhones and other iOS devices, go into the files app, then downloads to select the file. On Android devices, there will be a similar files app with a download section where you can find the file. The second way is to use the Solar Start app by navigating to firmware downloads and pressing on this symbol to download the latest version. Again, do this before you get to site to save time. Once the firmware is downloaded, you can click on Start Setup, connect via scan, or select the inverter at the bottom if it's shown. And once you're connected with the inverter, a screen will appear with the option to update the firmware. You will then be taken to the inverter's web UI, where you must press this button to trigger the update. The third way to update the firmware is in SolarWeb, by navigating to Settings, then Components. The inverter will need to be connected to the internet for the firmware update to be pushed through. Alright, so the second step is to set the local export limit or default control value. The default control value is defined by each DNSP, and you can see them in this table. The system will fall back to this value when the internet connection is lost. Once the internet is restored, the latest active control is enabled. To set this value, go into the Inverter Web UI, log in, and navigate to Safety and Grid Requirements, then select Export Limitation. Activate Power Control, select Total Power Limit, and enter the total DC power of the system in watts. That's the total amount of PV connected to the inverter. Activate export limit control, soft limit, and enter the relevant default control value where it says maximum grid feed in power. Make sure it's entered as watts and not as a percentage. Then click on save. Then the third step, enable cloud control. In the web UI, navigate to communication, then cloud control, set cloud control to on, and tick allow cloud control for regulatory purposes. Then click on save. So now I'm gonna show you how to do those settings on a snap inverter. So it's the same three steps, 
The first one is to make sure that the inverter is on the required firmware. I'll show you two ways to update the firmware. The first way is via the web UI by navigating to firmware update and pressing on run update. The inverter needs to have an internet connection for the update to be pushed through. The update can also be triggered in SolarWeb if the inverter is online, just like I showed you before in the components section within the settings. The second step, we need to set that local export limit or default control value. To enter the value, navigate to settings on the right hand side, then DNO editor, log in, and then navigate to dynamic power reduction. Select limit entire system, enter the total DC power of the system, activate export limiting control soft limit, and enter the relevant default control value under maximum grid feed and power. Make sure it is entered as watts and not as a percentage. Press the tick button to save the settings. And then the third step, we need to enable the cloud control. In the same menu where you were before, scroll down to cloud control and tick the box that says allow cloud control for grid or utility compliance purposes. Then press the tick button to save the settings. All right, so the rest of the settings are all done in SolarWeb. So that's the same for any of our inverters, whether you're working with one that has a pilot monitoring card or a snap inverter, which has the data manager card. Navigate to the system on SolarWeb and click on settings. Under profile, then grid operator, select the designated DNSP. Add the NMI of the site, tick the installer use only registration box, then click on save. After clicking save, a box will appear with the long form device identifier or LFDI, which is required to register the device. For in-band registration, no additional action is needed once you can see the LFDI, as the utility server will automatically take this LFDI. DNSPs that use this method include United Energy, PowerCore, CityPower and Osnet. With out-of-band registration, you will need to manually copy and paste the LFDI into the relevant section of the DNSP's portal. Use the copy button next to the LFDI to help with this. Currently, out-of-band registration is only being used by Gemini. All right, and that's it. So now you know how to configure the settings on any of our inverters to comply with the Victorian Emergency Backstop Mechanism. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.